it's time for Gauss's law. We start with Coulomb's law, which states that the force between two charges is given by the product of the charges divided by the distance between the charges squared, that's the inverse square law, and multiplied by the constant of the electric force. Notice that the form for gravity, Newton's universal law of gravitation, and Coulomb's law are quite similar. You have the product of masses, also inverse square law, the product of charges, inverse square law. Here a constant due to gravitation, and here a constant due to the electric force. Well, let's look at the concept of the field. The field would be, the gravitational field is to consider the force per unit mass, so you pull out the big G, big M over R squared, and then you sometimes uh, will simply just write what F is little mg, and the G is then everything else. And we do the same thing with the electric force. We take the little q out, and then we have k big Q over r squared. So these are our fields, and for the electric field, we will put in the vector r hat. And here, the plus sign means that when this is plus, a little test charge here that's plus would be kicked out along the r hat direction. r hat always points radially away from the center. So if we're over here with the test charge, it would point away from the center. So this is our nice form for the electric field due to a point charge. Now we're going to show another way of writing this, and we're going to do that by introducing a little area element. DA represents a little differential area element. In Cartesian coordinates, it would simply be dx dy, length times width. And the r hat here is perpendicular to that little patch of area. And we're going to do this integral. We're going to integrate this dot product. This is a double integral, which means we have two things over here, like a dx dy in Cartesian coordinates, for example. So let's do the integral. We have e as given is kq of r squared with the r hat and the little da area is r hat da. Now r dot r, since these are unit vectors, this is one. So you simply get the kq of r squared with the da and since we're looking at a sphere here and r is a constant where it's the radius, then we can pull all this stuff out and this is simply asking for the surface area of a sphere which is 4 pi r squared. So 4 pi r squared times kq over r squared, a marvelous cancellation occurs. One from the geometry, the 4 pi r squared due to the sphere, the area, surface area, and one due to the inverse square law of the physics. So one's mathematical, one's physics. We cancel and we get 4 pi times k times q, and we put in for this constant, whatever 4 pi, epsilon sub naught, the 4 pi's cancel, and you get a real cute result big Q over epsilon sub naught. Some textbooks will emphasize this charge being inside the sphere by writing a little i n subscript or inside. Let's use Gauss's law. This is Gauss's law and it's equivalent to Coulomb's law. It's a different form of it. So if we look at an infinite line of charge, we have worked this problem out before and we know what the answer is. The answer is basically what we're going to find here in just like one or two lines. So what you do is you make what's called the Gaussian surface and you make the surface so that the E fields pierce perpendicular through the surface. So here, since I have a line of charge, I use a cylinder, a little can, rather than a sphere. So using that little can, then I'm going to calculate this integral. Now notice that E will pierce through the wraparound of the can, like your label in a soup can, and there's no perpendicular ease on the edges. So when you go all the way around the surface, see here E skims the surface, so the dot product, because that surface defines a little unit vector point away from that surface, that will give zero. So the contribution comes from the wraparound, and the wraparound here is 2 pi r times little l, that's my surface area of the label that wraps around a soup can, soup can, and that will equal the Q that's on the inside. See, now it's important to work with the Q on the inside. This is an infinite line of charge, so there's charge outside there, but we're only interested in the charge on the inside. And that would be lambda times L. Notice here that the Q on the inside 
has lambda L so that L's cancel. And then you get one over two pi R, bring this on the other side, L's cancel, and it's lambda over epsilon sub naught. Now, just to remind you, we already know this from our calculation in a previous video where we calculated this for the finite line of charge and then take the limit as L goes to infinity. We got this very same thing where here H was the distance from the infinite line of charge. In this case, R is the distance from our infinite line of charge. R would take us on to that can and both results are the same. This one, we didn't have to do this long, complicated integral and use that power series trick to do the integral. We simply get the result in a line or two. And this is very, very slick and clever, and it works whenever there's symmetry. You can use the Gaussian principle, the Gau uh, the Gauss's law, Gauss's law. Here, I'm asking you as a practice problem to find the electric field at distance z above an infinite plane of charge with the uniform surface density sigma. And there, you should make a little pill box, a little box uh, where the infinite plane is cutting through the center of that box. And that's a standard calculation found in all the textbooks. Uh, have some fun with that.